What's going on guys? So you all probably saw the video where we installed a two inch receiver on the front of my father's era class B Winnebago Sprinter van because it now permits him the ability to use the front for cargo, for a bike rack, for a hitch, as well as a tire carrier. So let's talk about that. Hang tight, I'll be right back. So we all know the purpose of having a two inch receiver or a two and a half or a three inch receiver on the back of a pickup truck, right? We can throw a tow hitch inside of it. You can throw a cargo carrier, basket, bike rack, all sorts of different things in a receiver to be able to do things with the back of your truck for towing purposes, storage, cargo, all of that stuff. Well, a lot of people don't realize that there's actually some benefits in putting a receiver on the front of your vehicle as well. Let's talk about those. So of course we don't have a receiver on the front of our 2013 GMC pickup truck, but if we did, it would give us the ability to kind of move some of the stuff that we would traditionally put in the back of the truck up to the front. For a truck like this, it probably wouldn't make a heck of a lot of sense as long as we have open bed space and we have room in the bed to put whatever we plan on carrying. But let's say we have an accessory in the back that prohibits us from being able to use the bed. Having a front receiver can give you the ability to put things up front that might normally take up space in the back. Now, with a truck like this, it wouldn't make a lot of sense because you do have a bed. And I know there are some folks who do utilize a front receiver even on pickup trucks, but for us, we wouldn't really need it. But for my father, it made a lot of sense. And here's the reason why. So on the back of his Sprinter van, he has a kind of a swing out mount to hold the spare tire. Unfortunately, because that mount is on the back of his van, it's spaced off of the bumper so far that if he wants to tow anything with his Winnebago van, he has to use this extension to be able to get past how far the tire sticks out. And the problem with that is it creates a lot of leverage. It creates a lot of stress and it really moves whatever you're towing significantly further from the back of the van, which is not a good thing, especially if you want to avoid sway and other things that could make a towing trip a little bit more stressful than it needs to be. So we put a receiver hitch on the front of his van. And the reason why we did that was to be able to mount the spare tire and move it from the back to the front of the van. So here is the tire mount that will be going in the front of the van. You can see it has a bit of an angle to it right here. I think that's actually required if you're gonna use this type of a hitch to hold a tire on the front or on the back. But you can see it has the three bolts right here which slide in. So you can use this with different types of wheels that might not have the same bolt pattern on them. You can see it's a two inch tubular boxed section here that's welded to another two inch tubular section here. It comes with a really cool securing pin up front that also gives you a pin that goes through it to prevent this from backing out and potentially coming off of your receiver. It has a nice gusset right here for additional support and it has a really cool little stop adjustment right here. So whenever you're putting in or pulling it out, you have the ability to make sure that you line it up the first time with this acting as a stop whenever you're sliding it into the receiver. So very, very cool, very simple function in terms of what it's designed to do. It's just a tire relocation bracket essentially, but you can use this on the back of a vehicle. You can use this on the back of an RV. You can use this in all sorts of different applications. If you have a two inch receiver on the back of your RV, maybe you wanna carry an extra spare. Most of the time, the receivers on the back of an RV claim to be rated to about 300 pounds, but I really wouldn't, wouldn't do that because you're talking about dynamic weight, a lot of leverage off the back. Uh, if anything, you know, a spare tire on most RVs, unless it's gonna be like a GH, unless it's gonna be like a G or up rated tire, spare tire, wheel and everything's gonna probably weigh about 50 pounds. So putting something like this on the back shouldn't harm most RVs and it's gonna give you the ability to potentially carry two spare tires around with you versus the one that most RVs come with. Cause we all know an extra spare never hurts to have on an RV. But yeah, this is what it looks like. And uh, as soon as my father gets here with the van, we're gonna go ahead and install it on the front of his van. Okay, so my father's got his beautiful Winnebago era van here, class B Sprinter van. We installed the two inch receiver up front and you can barely see it even from this angle. And now we have the tire mount inside of it. We have the lock pin. We had to actually slide this to its furthest hole back, or I guess the furthest hole at the back of the shank, which pulled this out a little bit further because when it was all the way in, this part right here is making contact with the, the plastic right there and it would eventually probably crack it or break it, of course. I like the little stopper it's got right there. I like the anti-rattle pin that's also inside of it. Very cool. And I like how it kind of 
tapers to the, the front angle of the grill as well. Should look really good. Now, do you think it's going to restrict any airflow going into the van? I don't think it's going to restrict enough to cause any overheating or anything like that. I think there's going to be enough peripheral air getting around the spare tire. It shouldn't be an issue. I've seen vehicles like this with the spare tires on the front, and I've never heard anybody complaining about overheating. Yeah. But you'll be able to monitor the engine temperature, so you'll see if there's anything going on. And the cool thing is, is he could probably take the cover off of the tire, and that would allow some airflow to go in. But, you know, that's the thing about uh, about something like this, is you can pretty quickly see what type of impact it's having in terms of restrictive airflow from a temperature perspective. Okay, so he has the tire cover removed. There's the front part of it. There's the part that surrounds it. This is a dually tire, so you can see how it's dished in pretty dang far. I hope the bolt pattern spread out far enough to be able to accommodate the holes on here because these are pretty dang spread out. So we may want to do that before we remove it, just in case, because, yeah, the spacing of the six lugs on here are pretty far apart, and that may be the only issue that we have. So let's check that out real quick. So we're trying to figure out how we can make this work because... Yeah, this distance right here is not going to be great enough to be able to go through the holes on the wheel. So we're going to see if there's other holes that we can go through. In reality, we only really need to go through two of them because there's not really any any special need for this to be able to hold like a terrible amount of weight. How much would we have from there to there? Four and that's what I was kind of wondering as well. So. The precision measuring device there. Okay, so it's right to the bottom of the rubber. Where do you want to measure? From any two. And just barely. What do you think? Want to give it a shot? Uh, well, my concern is if we go from two alternate bolts, one here and one here, is the flat of the wheel going to have enough to bite on there? Or, or pop that one off, maybe take that one off. That's what I meant, take that one off. It'll probably just fall right into the center. It's going to look weird. That's already off center on the back. I don't know. We're going to tinker with this for a little bit and see what the best option is. <laughs> so my father and I have had a, a very interesting chuckle over this. We did not anticipate that it would look like look like this. I, I don't know why we didn't anticipate it, but uh, it's lining up to two of the bolt holes. So we have it secured and it's not moving from this angle. <laughs> it really looks bad at any angle. Uh, the first thing we said after putting it all back together was, yeah, this isn't going to stay like that. Now, it wouldn't look as bad if it didn't have that angle right there, but everyone that we've seen has that angle. So maybe I can get my buddy uh, who does welding to fabricate something, because if we could actually just have it go straight up right there, and this thing wasn't angled like that, it would look a whole lot better. I mean, this would come in really handy for the back of an RV, for the back of a pickup, for the back of a van. But on the front, I just don't know if it's going to work out. Now, I see what they're doing here because if you have a wheel that the tire isn't a dually style dish like this, because we had to reverse it, that's why it's sticking out so far. If the tire was set back, you know, about three inches, it wouldn't look as bad. But the way it is right here, because it has a dually tire on it, it really, really sticks off the front. But you know what? Maybe you love this. Leave a comment below. Is this like super cool? Are you thinking of all the aerodynamic benefits this is gonna provide of allowing wind to travel over the RV? Or do you just think it looks plain ugly the way it is? You know, this is doing what it's supposed to do just in a non-traditional way. And again, I think if this was going straight up and this wasn't angled, it would look a whole lot better. So maybe we'll have another, another episode to this uh, interesting project and maybe we'll get something fabricated. All right, so coming around to the back, well, that cleaned things up. Definitely, definitely uh, opened up some space back here. The next project would be to probably remove that, but you don't even really need to remove that because the tire would stick off like this far before requiring this extension down here. But now, you know, any traditional or conventional hitch you put down here is only gonna come out to about here. So you could remove this and unless he's gonna make an incredibly tight turn, there's really no chance that he's gonna hit that. And you just have to keep an eye on it. And thankfully, he has a reverse camera up there to help him do that. So it worked out in terms of, of relocating the bulk from the back to the front. He does need to mount his, his license plate back on here. But 
You know, it, it accomplished what he was trying to accomplish, but cosmetically, it just doesn't look that great. But you know what? When you have a Class B van, who really cares what it looks like, right? You're, you're exploring the country in a Sprinter van. Just throw the spare on the front. At least that's what I say. Anyways, guys, we're going to work on this. There will probably be a third episode to this uh, interesting project we're trying to tackle to see what we can come up with for the front. Guys, if you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up, and we will talk to you again very soon.